Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. From Beale Street Caravan to Stax Music Academy, she's been working to keep Memphis music heritage alive and vital for the music lovers of today and the musicians of tomorrow. I'm Daryl Snodgrass from WKNO-FM here with Pat Mitchell Worley, Executive Director of the Stax Music Academy, which is currently celebrating its 20th anniversary. Thank you for joining us for a conversation with Pat Mitchell Worley. Pat, thanks so much for coming in. Oh no, I'm happy to be here. Now, I guess um, probably everyone uh, watching this knows what we mean when we say stacks. We think of Otis Redding and Sam and Dave and Booker T and the MGs and, and, uh, and those folks. And that sort of ended essentially with the bankruptcy in 1977. And then here in 2000 or so, something, something new and exciting rose from the ashes. And you're now a part of that about the Stax Music Academy. So, so tell our viewers, what is the Stax Music Academy? What do you do there? So SMA, just to make it a little short, <laughs> is an after-school music institute and we also do youth development so we fall into these two categories we're a creative youth development organization our focus is on music and when I say um, oftentimes when people when they say okay so what's the difference after school it, it, my, my child goes after school for you know, marching band or, mm -hmm. you know, at, um, at their high school. And so our program is made up of students who are from around the Mid-South. We have around 100 students who are in the program. They are um, participating at different levels. We have beginners classes in um, piano and guitar. Then we also have a junior high ensemble. We have a jazz ensemble. Uh, we have our high school ensemble, which is rhythm section, they are the, that, that's where everyone dreams of landing. They wanna be a part of rhythm section. Then we have an acapella group, Street Corner Harmonies, and we also have an ensemble that is made up of all of the jobs that are production. Production is very important, so we don't leave it out. We teach kids about how to play. Um, we talk about how to be a good person in the process of growing up and figuring yourself out, but we also dive deep into m the music side and look at, um, we teach students how to read music, we get into music theory, and um, it's, it's a unique place. Uh, we have students who are part of the Shelby County School System, students who are in private schools, and students who are, I mean, they may come from uh, North Mississippi or Eastern Arkansas and they come over here every day they get together and they play music this year we oh my goodness Daryl I'll just keep talking so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, this year the school year we also added a songwriting and music business right cohort and, so yeah, that's uh, we're gonna come back to that I think um, and I'm glad that you brought up that point that it is an after-school and summer program because people I think sometimes get confused because the Soulsville umbrella organization also runs a charter school mm -hmm. but you don't have to be a Soulsville student to take advantage of the Stax Music Academy exactly um, our parent company the Soulsville Foundation it uh, operates SMA then we've got the charter school, and then we've got the Stax Museum of American right. Soul Music. So I often um, joke that between the Stax Music Academy and the museum, we're the past, present, and future of Memphis music. Well, there you go. And so it's right there, compact, and you get a little bit of everything. Um, the museum is telling the story of this label and the impact that it had on the world and how the, and then you get to how the legacy continues today. The programming at the museum is just extraordinary. And some of the things that the staff there do deep dives on are just like, if you're a music lover, you could totally geek out and have a good time with it. Then our alumni, 
not only do some of them work in the Saks Museum, but they're out playing around town and around the world. Our alum are playing with Bruno Mars. They're writing songs for Paul McCartney. You know, they're doing some fabulous things. And yeah. after 20 years, it's amazing to see where these guys are. There have been some amazing artists that it's just like, I look at a bass player like Mono Neon who went through the program mm -hmm. and he was Prince's last bass player. And Amazing. this kid, everybody's a kid to me now, by the way. <laughs> I've reached that age where everyone's yeah. a kid. Um, but he's amazing and all of these musicians talk about him and they're like oh mono neon and he came out of sma so when you look at that and you look at the um the impact that it's had on the lives of those kids who are now grown up whether it's you know local band ghost town blues band some of those guys went mm -hmm. to SMA. Mm -hmm. um, Southern Avenue, Jeremy Powell went to yep. SMA. And Southern Avenue is up for a Grammy nomination. Yes. You yes. know, it's like, whoa, this place has really had an effect on young people who care about and are passionate and want to succeed in, in, in music in Memphis. So. Um, as we mentioned, of course, this is the 20th anniversary. You started out in 2000 in a, a couple of rooms at Stafford Elementary School, and now, now you've uh, had this wonderful program that's been going on. So I know you've got some special events happening this year. So what's going to be happening for your 20th anniversary year? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it is, I, I keep joking with the staff, the pace that we've been going at with Justin Timberlake and the Levi's Music Pro Project and Ellen, that pace does not slow down this year. Yeah. It is amazing. So we start out, amazing is my official word because I'm always like wowed about everything. But um, we start things out on January 17th with our music career fair. It's open to students around the city. Yes. Um, you don't have to be a music student. If you're just interested in a career in music, it's free. It's just something where you come and meet professionals and they can talk to you about what it really takes and what you should be looking at, whether it's, you know, what is your post-secondary path? What mm -hmm. does it include? Mm -hmm. And um, those are real conversations. We did it last year and we were so excited by the turnout that we got and really the great questions that the young people had because they're paying attention to what's going on in the music world and they wanna know, well, how does this work? Or why does this work? And why, why is this artist allowed to do this? And so we are fortunate enough to have so many professionals in the city of Memphis who are willing to share the knowledge that they've got and this just provides them with you know an arena to do that in. It, it's a very fun event. And uh, then the next night, we roll right off of that, and the next night, we open up for Booker T at oh, the yes. Crosstown Theater. Yes. So that's gonna be, the students are really excited, as you can imagine. Sure, of course. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Some of them are very nervous, and some are like, yeah, this is our moment. You know, yes, <laughs> we're gonna it show is. him that we're continuing, <laughs> we're continuing what he started. and. Um, then from there, we have our junior high school group. They're going down to the Grammy Museum in Mississippi. They do a thing called Red Carpet on the Delta, mm -hmm. and it's the Friday night before the Grammy Awards, and all of the young people in the Delta are invited to come for a red carpet event, and we're the headliner. So that's, that's pretty big for our middle school students. They're just like, what, we're the headliner? Red carpet event? You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they're all about red carpet event. And, um, and so we roll out of that in February. We have our Black History Month program right. that we do every year. This year's theme is uh, Let's Do It Again. And it's looking at stacks, classics mm -hmm. that have been covered and or sampled. And um, that's interesting. It, it's yeah. really, it, you don't think about how many songs are even when I looked at the list, I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, that is, that is a Wendy Renee song a uh, Ariana Grande's doing. Right, oh, right. totally yeah. didn't put it together mm -hmm. at first, and now I hear the sample in the song. And so it's, it, it's gonna be a fun event. It's a family event. We do two performances. One is for um, 
it's free for schools around the Mid-South and then the evening performance is for the community to attend. So our students work really hard on that show. It's our biggest production of the year. And um, that's the 25th of February. Um, I could go through all this and you, I just, yeah. I will say the one, the, there are two that I'm excited about um, that are on our calendar. On um, March 21st, we are at Crosstown Theater and we are teaming up with the Trombone Shorty Foundation. Oh, right, I saw that. Yeah. They are coming up here and they're bringing all their gorgeous horns with them. And we are doing a show that is called Memphis versus New Orleans. And they're gonna play all the New Orleans hits and we're gonna play all these Memphis hits. And then oh, in the end, we're gonna, gonna get fun. together and play together. And I'm, I'm a big music fan and I love New Orleans music. And so this is like the show, maybe even, you know, in the back of my head, I'm going Memphis music is better. But, <laughs> well, but you're right, of course. It's great to, <laughs> it, to have it at a level that the high school students can share. And um, then we go down there to uh, do a performance with them. We're gonna return the favor. So our students will go down there. It's a college visit for us. It's a college visit for them too. Sure. They're gonna come up here and visit the U of M and mm -hmm. Rhodes and mm -hmm. see Memphis is a great place to go to school. And we're gonna go down there and let our students see what the universities in New Orleans have to offer. So I think that for the students, they're just excited they're going to New Orleans. Well, sure. You know? <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, the bigger purpose is to be able to play with other young creatives and to also look at some of those options as far as university goes. And um, the, the last thing that I'm super excited about is um, we're gonna do uh, a solathon. We're doing this event that is like 16 hours of streaming live music from the Stax Museum. And we're having artists come in and play and um, you can go online, make a donation, you can watch the show, and then it ends with a soul brunch. We're gonna do a soul food brunch at the museum, and um, I think that event, although I'll be very tired, <laughs> is going to be musically very fulfilling. <laughs> So we're inviting a lot of friends to come and uh, perform on that event. So that's in, that's in May. It's a, it's a hot year. It is, and I want to remind our viewers that uh, they can go to staxmusicacademy.org and there's a calendar there of all these events and there are many, many more that we don't really have time to even get yeah, into it's, here. Oh, <laughs> it's so much, but it's for the students, um, you know, Stax over the years has been known for doing performance. Mm -hmm. You can watch us perform and you are going to be blown away. It's going to be a great show. and. Now we've added all these other elements that really let them get their hands dirty in what is really the music industry. And for them, that's like, oh wow, I can do this? Oh, I can do this? You know, I, I never thought of being, a, um, being an engineer. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is something new. I'm really good at it. And so through the exploration, they're able to find these talents that they didn't know they had. Sure. It's, it, it, and you know, as far as the instructors and the staff goes, it is, um, it's amazing to guide the students through that. It, it, it's just like to see them get overwhelmed with the possibilities that are before them. And we had a, um, we had a meeting uh, some weeks ago and our students were uh, being interviewed by someone and he asked them what, you know, what do you wanna be? And it, it was shocking to us, you know, the few staff members that were sitting in, you know, one student, he's a bass player. And he's like, yeah, I wanna design my own line of basses. It's really what mm -hmm. I wanna do. And then another student, he's a guitar player and he's just like, yeah, but I really wanna go into music psychology. And he's like, explain, it's a really, you know, it's a new field, but this is what I wanna do. And another student's like, music therapy. And yeah, you know, it's just like, they've really thought out. It's not just, I wanna play, it's all of these other areas of music in which they can use their talent, but also have, a, have an impact on other people. So that, 
It makes you feel good. That's very, very valuable because, you know, it's, there are so many horror stories of young music, musicians getting, getting, you know, messed up with yeah. unscrupulous managers and agents and that sort of thing. So having some idea of that business, I think, is so important. Now, I want to ask you, you've been around uh, on the edges and in the middle of the music business here in the <laughs> Mid-South for quite a while. How did you come to this position? Give us, give us a little background. Mm, well, if you had asked me 10 years ago if I ever thought I would be doing this, I would have said no. Mm -hmm. If you had asked me 20 years ago, I would have said no. So we can just say that I never guessed that I would be in any way involved in music education. Um, for me, I am, I'm a music fan first. Sure. First and foremost. And... I planned on working for a newspaper. Uh, my family, uh, my mother's side of the family is in the newspaper mm -hmm, business mm -hmm. and, and everything. And man, I dodged that bullet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to all my friends who work at newspapers. We need you, yeah. but <laughs> um, yeah, I, that's, that's what I plan to do. And somehow along the way, um, I got frustrated because there was all this great music that I listened to and I just thought they didn't get good press mm -hmm, coverage. Mm -hmm. So I started writing for music magazines and- I saw you wrote for The Star. Yes. We, we all still <laughs> miss The Star. It's such a great <laughs> publication. And um, I, I, my first job was at Memphis in May and just to show how things come full circle, um, at Memphis in May, Dini Parker, was uh, over marketing, VP of marketing, and and um, she wasn't my direct report, but she was definitely my boss. And <laughs> she's, I feel like she's still my boss today as the founder of, you know, Stax Music Academy and the sure. museum and the charter school, and this, this was her baby. And so um, she's been with me all those years as a mentor. Little did I know that she was actually training me for this. <laughs> That's how I feel. And, um, but I started out at Memphis in May and writing for magazines, working with Memphis bands and uh, helping with PR. That moved into a little bit more of um, artist, it wasn't really artist development. It was just that because we didn't have the infrastructure in Memphis, being just a publicist was hard to do. So there were so many other um, responsibilities that fell in my lap just because they didn't have a manager or they didn't have a booking agent or what have you. So I, um, I got involved with music and I remember the first band, it was a rock band um, called Son of Slam, gave me my first chance to do PR. They were like, you don't really have an ex any experience and we're a new band, <laughs> let's work together. So, <laughs> I'm still friends with all of them, but um, it was the beginning of a career for me. And over the years, I worked as a publicist for um, RCA, um, gosh, several independent labels, worked with a lot of independent bands. And then I uh, also had the chance to write for a lot of different magazines, The Memphis Star, um, uh, some national publications, and I joke because this was pre-internet, so right. I could write a story in one place and just rearrange it a little bit, and also <laughs> post it in another city. They didn't care, but you know, the internet came, and oh, yep. all of a sudden, I'd had to do extra interviews and all this different, different stuff, working harder and everything for the non-pay that I was receiving, <laughs> and um, I guess I just. I loved what I did, so at, at, at 22, you don't really care about how much money you're making. You just want the experience and you want a chance to talk to people who have made music that you love and hear the behind the scenes story. And along the way, I had this, um, I had this dream that I would do radio, so <laughs> I did radio, first commercial radio, which right. was a horrible experience for me. And um, then I moved to non-commercial radio. And after that, I went to work at the Blues Foundation and really that was 
the defining moment in my career. That was when I actually got serious and knew that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And um, the two great executive directors with David Les and Howard Stovall learned yep. so much from both of them. And um, David is still a mentor and, and, um, and, and enjoy picking his brain and also his music tastes <laughs> all the time. What should, I, what should I listen to? But there was um, the Blues Foundation was the moment where I feel like I came to understand, really understand Memphis's place in music. Before then, it was sort of like, yeah, yeah, this was made here, and that was made here, and there are all these great musicians in town. Yeah, 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 but what we're doing, it's new and different, and the bands I like are new and cool and hip, and those guys, their days are over, and uh, and I, I just didn't understand. Yeah. And um, at the Blues Foundation, experiencing um, time with Rufus Thomas, and time with artists like Bobby Rush and hearing what they went through, their stories, how they, how they created, all of that, it, um, it helped with my sense of place in Memphis and being really proud and happy and, and embracing where I was from. And um, I also got to work with some amazing people. And the staff was great, but it was, um, it was also at a time when a lot of, there were still a lot of blues legends alive. John Lee Hooker was still here. B.B. Sure, King was still sure. here. Ike Turner was still here. Um, and to talk to those people, you know, I, while I was at the Blues Foundation, I remember, I'm, I'm so not in any way impressed by stardom, fandom, any of that. It's just like, whatever, you're a normal person. You make some great music, but you're a normal person. And um, however, I do remember when I walked into Etta James' dressing room and I, a, a tear came out of my eye <laughs> because I was like, this is Etta James, you know? Yeah. And the moment that I, it, the moment that was the pivotal wow moment for me is um, we were doing an event in LA, Lifetime Achievement Award, B.B. King was receiving the award, and I walked into the back dressing room, and in front of me was B.B., Rufus, Jolly Hooker, and Ike Turner, and they were just talking, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh my. Yeah. And I stopped for a second, and I was so overwhelmed in the, the history mm -hmm. in that those people together, and I like turned, to catch my breath and there's Scotty Moore and DJ Fontana. And I was just like, oh, okay, okay. And I had to like walk out of the room because I've never been so like taken aback and like this is history right in front of me. These guys, they were the ones, they did it. And so I, I think that that's affected me my, you know, the rest of my career. And um, the Blues Foundation was just this, this great place to hear hear the stories just to hear how this song came about why it came about you know and uh and a lot of a lot of those artists were hilarious so <laughs> i that i think that's how i got here to this place along the way i worked for the M music foundation i worked for arts memphis those were all um wonderful arts experiences and really understanding how music is really an economic driver for the city, although we're one of the few music cities that does not have an economic impact study on how music affects, brings money to the city and also how many people are working in the music sector, but hopefully that will happen soon. Well, um, this has been a fascinating discussion and uh, I, I'm curious about, um, you've already started a new program called Smart Stacks 101, which is offering uh, group lessons for beginners in I think piano and guitar. It, it seems to me like you're really both looking back at the wonderful history of Stacks and then, and then you're looking forward with these, these young people. Well, I, um, I know that that Stacks 101 class, I think I can, I'll probably offend someone by saying this, but I'm okay with it. Um, my my daughter, she wanted to uh, 
she wanted to sing. She wanted to try out for, she's a teenager, she wanted to try out for a vocal group at Stax. And um, I said, no, I can't. And she's like, what do you mean? And uh, I said, you've got to take piano lessons first. And so I made her take piano lessons, and she was so upset. And now she's starting to play piano after a couple of years. And so I let her do the vocal audition. She made it in a vocal group. And she goes, Mommy, why'd you make me take that piano? And I said, because it helps you with music theory. And the fact that I go back to that music theory, it's so important. And most of our students who take music theory, they test out of the first year of music theory in college. Right. So it saves them money <laughs> on the you know, in the long run. But we're really about the students understanding where the music comes from, how it's put together, and why. And why is this so striking with this? Why does this work together? Why do, why does that vocal modulation, what what does that mean? What is what is the writer conveying? You know, we really take the time out to make sure the students get that. And uh, that that's one of the things that makes the program it, it something that students come out of it and they're able to say, I'm ready to be a musician or Music is going to be something I excel at, but I'm going to do it for me. But at least there's some great music listeners and there are some great music players who are around the world listening to other, you know, pieces of music and they know what it means to the city and what they can do with it as a communicator. You're doing wonderful work. I'm excited that this is the 20th anniversary, and uh, I know you've got lots of things going on. I've been talking with Pat Mitchell Worley. Uh, she is the new executive director of the Stax Music Academy. It is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. They've got lots of events going on. You can go to their website, staxmusicacademy.org, and get all the information there, but it's just a wonderful program that keeps growing here in the Mid-South, and we're glad to have it. Pat, it's been such a treat having you here on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you.